Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video. So in this video I'm going to be showing you how exactly you can set up coding environment in Linux. So if you're wondering how to set up something like Visual Studio Code or even some other apps as well, I'm going to be showing you how to do that on Linux. So the first thing you need to know while setting things up in Linux is picking a distro. Now I would recommend you to use something like Linux Mint if you never use Linux or if you already used Linux Mint and you still want to use it, you can. It's not a big deal. But this video is specifically for Debian based or, or Ubuntu based distros. If you are running something like Arch, the commands that I run may not work. So Arch based distros like Manjaro, Garuda, Arco, uh, if you are running Gen2, chances are the commands may not work or some packages may not exist. But let's go ahead and get started with installing all of them. In order to do that, we're going to be opening up the terminal. So the very first thing you have to do in order to get things running is to update your system, obviously. So once you install the distro that you chosen, you type in the following command. You type in sudo apt update and then sudo apt upgrade. Hit enter and that's going to update all of the packages for us. And as you can see, we have all of the packages updated. So basically what this command does is it's going to update all of the repositories so that you can get the latest packages. And the upgrade is obviously going to upgrade all of the packages. If you don't want to use a terminal, you can go into your taskbar and click on this security icon. And you should actually see that your system should be up to date. Make sure it's at this point and once you're done, you should be good to go. The next thing is installing some packages. These are specifically coding packages like Node.js, some really important tools like git, curl, uh, which are actually some utils. So what you have to do in order to install them is pretty simple. You do sudo apt install. And when you install some tools like Node.js, now Node.js is a JavaScript runtime library. I uh, will install Node.js, npm, which is a node package manager, in order to install node packages. And then we will install GCC, G. So GCC is a C compiler, and a C compiler is G. And then we will install uh, Git. Now one thing I want to do before installing anything like Node.js or NPM is just uh, removing it because inside of Linux Mint or any Debian based distro, you can't really get the latest version of Node.js. It's going to get like the 10th version, which is pretty old and you'll have a lot of security bugs. So we'll not install Node.js to the terminal. I will install it, but not using the apt install command. We'll install git, we'll install curl, now for a terminal based editor that I use is NeoVim. Uh, you can also install Vim if you want but NeoVim uh, is what I use. And once it's done, you're satisfied with what you want, just hit enter. And now it's going to install all of the packages for us. Now it's not going to take too much of time. Uh, as you can see, we'll see GCC saying that we have no input files meaning that our installation is successful. Same with G++, you can see it says no input files, meaning that everything worked really well. The next thing is to install Node.js. Now, if you go into Firefox or whatever web browser you have, the default web browser is Firefox right here. Uh, let's see, so Node.js. Uh, if you go into this website, uh, geeks for geeks, uh, it sh there should be a command if we go down, as you can see, this is the command. So I'm going to just copy it right here. So let's copy it. Copy that, paste it right here. So this is the command. Now the curl again is going to help us install terminal uh, internet packages. So this is going to add the 10.x, so Node.js 10.10.x repo, but we want a more better version. So we'll go with 16. Now if you're on Arch, installing Node.js with your Pacman manager, uh, the package manager is going to install the latest one. 
because they tend to be new year, newer and Debian and this was based on that uh, they are pretty stable and they will not be on the latest technology so we'll go ahead and hit enter on that and it's going to install the node source node.js16.x repo and it's going to update it and uh, once it is done you should be able to install node.js so we'll do sudo apt install dash y node.js uh, let's go ahead and hit enter and it looks like we already installed it so I'm going to just leave it as it is now if you want to install the yarn package manager which is faster than npm so I uh, not install that you just copy this whole bunch of command paste it it's just going to I guess add some keys to the slash etc or slash user and the keyring file so and as you can see we have the yarn package manager installed this is not like the uh, package manager for a uh, destroys just instead of npm you can use yarn so that's all about installing something like node.js gcc g++ now if you want to install java just go and type in sudo app install open jdk dash 17 the latest one that's jdk I'm not going to install it because obviously that's not required for me but if you want to just go ahead type it type the command and once it's done let's go ahead and install a code editor now I use NeoVim but for many people I think NeoVim is not a really good editor by default so I'm going to be showing you how to install Visual Studio Code now you don't have to use the terminal in order to install Visual Studio Code uh, but uh, you can use the software manager. So if you go into this start menu type in software manager uh, Give it a little time as you can see we have software manager right here. Let's go ahead and type in VS code and it Says no packages. I guess it is visual uh, Studio Visual Studio code uh, let's see and as you can see we have three packages right here we have Visual Studio Code the OSS version now I would recommend you to install the actual DV package because this is going to install the Flatpak version which is kind of a buggy one not fully buggy but at least for the most part it's a little buggy than the .dv package which are meant for Debian operating systems so in order to install that, you can go ahead and install through the software manager in Linux Mint. But I'm going to go with another way. So we'll go into Visual Studio Code. And if we go into right here, code.visualstudio.com. I made videos on how to install it. You can just check that out if you want to. Uh, but here, just go ahead and hit the .dv package for Debian and Ubuntu. Since Linux Mint is a Debian uh, Ubuntu based distro, not Debian, you can install the .dv. And if you are something like Fedora, Red Hat, then install the RPM. Uh, there are more options right here, as you can see Windows, Mac, but this is a Linux one, so I'm going to close it. I've already installed it. Uh, so once you're done installing the .db package, it's going to be about like 70 megabytes, it's not going to be too large. Just going to the directory where it's installed. Uh, here's where it's, everything is installed. So I'm going to just double click on this package which is about 80 megs so I'm going to uh, right click and open with the GDEBI package installer I guess this is for installing Debian packages just go ahead and open that up and it's I think it's going to fetch all of the details the maintainer the size and uh, let's go ahead and close this and let's install the package and make sure you give your root password it's not going to take too much of time as you can see yeah it gives you the maintainer the size and about uh, visual studio code if you want to know what it is uh, so if you click on details we should see setting up visual studio code and now it should be done installing and yeah it's done so it's going to take some time to set everything and once it's done, what you have to do is open up the start menu 
and let's close this package installer and type in code and this is visual studio code so if, if we drag this right here i guess it's not going to work uh, right click add to panel see visual studio code right here let's go ahead and open and i already uh, did some configuration i want to show you what exactly i have done so in order to show you what i've done uh, go into the extensions go into github theme so github theme is a package an extension which allows you to uh, install some bunch of themes like uh, github dark light colorblind dimmed and various other themes so just search for github themes and uh, if you take it's going to take a little bit you should see github theme if you scroll down a bit and here install you should see the install button click on that and once it's done click on set color theme as you can see the default one is light i'm going to go with the color blind because that looks much better and the other thing is um, material theme icon if you search for that you should see the first one it is a icon theme which allows you to have a beautiful icon set uh, you can install it if you want and again you can set the icon theme by clicking on this once you install it now one important extension is python so this is one of the most important extension that you need to install if you are working with python it's going to give you intellisense like auto completion that's what it means uh, linting debugging it it's going to also give you Jupyter Notebooks, which you actually see in web, but you can integrate in Visual Studio Code. Uh, so this is a really cool Python extension that I would recommend you to install. And once it's done, uh, there are some other extension. Uh, the first next one is going to be Prettier. And here we have Prettier Code Formatter. Let's go ahead and hit install. and it's going to take some time and in order to enable prettier hit control and comma and search for the following format on format and you should see editor format on paste and format on save now if you're using javascript css html then this is going to format uh, like it's going to arrange things in a nice neat and nice manner uh, you can install the Prettier and I also installed the Vim extension which I've shown you in the previous video so you can check that out if you want to. So we'll go with the Vim and you should see Vim. Let's go ahead and hit install, just install it and you should be able to code using the Vim emulation layer. So as you can see, we are able to use Vim. I can use something like WQ and it's going to work like you expected. So that's about Visual Studio Code. The next thing we need to know about is setting up something like MySQL uh, for databases. If you want to do that, go into the Start menu, type in Software Manager, and we can go and search for MySQL. And we have MySQL dash server. So we'll go with that. And it's about 30.9 makes that's not going to take too much of time so this is how you can install if you want to install it from the software manager but obviously i'm going to go with the terminal way so let's sudo apt install mysql dash server let's go and hit enter all right so it took about a couple of minutes to install but once it is done the next thing is see whether mysql works or not as you can see it works well uh, you just need to configure it uh, you can search in websites, but I'm not going to be doing like a MySQL video. You can install it from here if you want. But once it's done, the next thing is getting the terminal working. So I'm going to open up the terminal again. Now you don't have to open the terminal using your mouse and stuff like that. You can just hit Control Alt T, which is a shortcut in most Ubuntu and Debian based distros, or even in some Arch based distros as well. Let's go ahead and install some fonts. And here, as you can see, this is a GitHub repo. So basically, this repo has like some Meslo LGS NF fonts, which are really important in order to make sure that you have proper icon setup. So what you have to do is just click on one of this, click on download, 
and just save the files so go with uh, the bold italic bold italic and the regular just go with that install all of the ttfs once you're done with that go into your file explorer in this case it's tunar so go into downloads and here we have all of the fonts uh, so what you, all you have to do is click on that click on install uh, it's already installed for me so i'm not going to install it again so just double click on it font view is going to open up i guess this is not font view uh, let's see what it is about yeah it's about it's just fonts app uh, just go ahead install for all of the uh, ttf and it's going to install it for you just go ahead and close the apps that you want to change the font for and it should go ahead and work for you now for the terminal we are going to be using the gnome terminal by default in order to change the font you can right click on the empty space or if we go into view I guess edit if you go into edit preferences if you go into the unnamed which is the default profile make sure you take this i take this uh, box custom font click on that and select and search for meslo lgs nf regular and increase the font right here if you want to i'm going to go with the default one and obviously there are colors which you can go with so i'm going to go with this uh, go with the let's go with this one and I will enable some transparency so we'll go ahead and enable a little bit so that looks cool as well for you so let's see how to customize this one so first thing is to get some dot files now I have my dot files in github so if you go into slash system coding and the dot files as you can see right here this is my dot files uh, there are the zshrc bash vimrc the neo vim configs that i'm going to be showing you right now so if i launch vim this is how neo vim looks like it looks really good and in order to make it look really good all, all you have to do is do git clone so the git is used to clone packages uh, clone repositories and all of the other stuff will clone github.com slash system coding slash dot file slash system coding let's go and hit enter on that and now once it is done we can go into dot file slash system coding and we should see the two readme and the license files in order to see all of the dot config the dot bash rc uh, all you have to do is type in ls-lah and as you can see we have dot bash rc uh, the dot config directory and all of the other stuff as well now if i go into my dot config directory this is where all of my configs are stored like the neovim config the fish config and some other apps as well so i have the nvim which i'm going to remove right now and show you how to get my configs so if you go into the readme file uh, of this repo you can see that this is a section where I have shown you how to clone the repo copy files and uh, for, I have also shown you an example so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the following uh, instead of copying I'm going to move the entire directory so I'm going to do mv dot files system coding dot config and vim and this is the uh, folder that we have cloned and instead of that we have dot config and and vim and we're going to move it to dot config in our actual system let's go ahead and hit enter on that and now we're going to dot config cd into and vim and now we should have these two files now if i go into vim in it dot vim as you can see we have everything right here so I'm using plug as my default plugin manager uh, in order to get that you do github.com and uh, here this is the vim plug repository so a really important one that you need to have so for neovim you just clone this section for vim you have this one I've done it already and once you've done that close your terminal reopen vim 
and type in plug install and it's going to install it for you now one error that is going to come uh, when you install my configs is the telescope dot nvim this is not going to work because it's not because that the line is wrong is because the version that is installed by su app, mag app package manager is actually an older version compared to what we have right here in order to show you that we actually go into github.com slash neovim so inside of this uh, repository if you go down we should see and section where you can install it from source so this is how you can install it from source it's going to install the latest package for you which is i guess 0.6.1 if you don't want to use the terminal again go into the software manager open that up and search for something like neovim and here we have the flat hub version flat pack version uh, this is going to install the 0.6.1 which is the latest one that we want install it and you should be good to go if you don't want to just put uh, this double quote in order to comment it and now when you launch vim again you should see that it launches the way it's expected to be so that's really all there is for neovim now the final thing that i'm going to do is the uh, shell we're going to be installing zsh so we'll do sudo apt install zsh now one other thing that I forgot is installing ninja cargo um, cmake and make so we install cmake make cargo and I guess we'll install only those so these are all the compilation tools that you need let's go ahead and give a root password and it's about 138 megs which is actually a really huge size but it should not take too much of time so I'm going to just come back once it is done alright so everything is done installing the next thing we're going to be doing is setting zsh as our default shell so we'll do sudo change shell for my user so we'll do that we'll do slash bin slash zsh and that should do the job for us so we'll clear the screen now you should log, log out so we'll Go ahead and do that. So, log out, and that's going to log out from our desktop environment. And give your password again. And now let's go ahead and change the display. If you go into the display, go ahead and change this to a proper resolution. There we go. So let's go and do that close this close that and now if we open the terminal it should launch on my zsh so now the default zsh con uh, zsh looks pretty bland in order to get on my zsh it's pretty simple to do all you have to do is search for oh my zsh i'm going to put this in the description install on my zsh and we'll go ahead and copy this command using the curl if you are using wget, there is a command for that. So I'm going to paste that. And it's already installed for me. So I'm going to remove dot omizsh and paste this again. I'm going to do that. And now everything should work correctly. The next thing I would recommend you to do if you clone my configs is just move dot files system coding dot zshrc to the present directory so this is the command uh, this is going to move the dot zshrc in the dot files directory to the actual system and once it is done you should be able to use my config it's going to dot zshrc so this is what we have right here i'm going to go ahead and do the dot files zshrc right here and now let's see the modified zshrc and as you can see this is my zshrc file it's not too much i'm going to add it as time goes on the next thing is install a pretty cool prompt 
I use Starship prompt. Again, I'm going to put this in the description, and I'm going to copy this, paste this right here, and let's install it to user slash local slash pip. Let's go with. Uh, let's go ahead and put our root password, and that should do the job for us. And now, if I close the terminal, open it up again. As you can see, it works really well. Now it's going to complain saying that ZSH auto suggestions are not right installed. Uh, don't worry about that. Just go ahead and follow this documentation. Uh, I, there we go. So instead of the install plugins, what we have to do is clone the GitHub repo. So this is uh, this one. Install that. And do the exact same thing for the other one, the ZSH auto suggestions. And that should do the job for us if you open the terminal again. Now, this is going to complain with another one, says uh, ZSH syntax highlighting. So, all you have to do is edit that file and just remove this one. I'm going to remove that before this video actually is published to YouTube uh, so you do not see all of those errors so as you can see right now we have a perfect terminal with completion you can use fish if you want but ZSH is much better right here so that's all I want to talk about we installed two editors NeoVim and we also installed Visual Studio Code set up some important utilities like Python and stuff like that we also see how to customize the terminal and that's really all it is. It's pretty simple to install all of the stuff in Linux. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button, like the video, and I will see you in the next one. Everything changes.